What's up, family? Before I go in, there's a little bell next to your subscription button. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click on it so that you can get your notifications each time I drop a video like this one. Now, how can I say this? This is a video that will cover, in some part, discrimination, and I'm about to discriminate. This video is not for black people. It's not for Latinos, it's not for Asians. This video is for white folks. Now, why would I make a video exclusively for white folks? Why would I title this video, If I Was White, White People Would Love Me? Reason being is, if you think about where I came from, where I am, the person I am today, that's honorable to white people. They talk about it all the time. Second chances, growing up in the hood, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, making something out of yourself, raising two productive children. He has a son in business school in London who's on vacation, working for him at one of his companies. He have a daughter in New York, in law school. He protects his community, he protects his family, he provides for his family. He's a taxpaying citizen. He employs people. Yet, because of his message when he speaks out against corruption and those who are in power, somehow they got a problem with him. Now, I've been in this game for about 30 years making music, I've had an advice column, and I make these videos, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and it's all about spreading knowledge and awareness and trying to give people some news that they can use. The thing that I'm, a pass I'm very passionate about is exposing those who are corrupt, those are, who are indecent, those who are bullies, those who try to make other people's lives miserable those who try to make others' lives harder than they need to be. I don't like those type of people, and I don't give a damn what their skin tone is. It just so happened that most of those people that are in power in America happens to be white, including the president. So when I speak against these powers that be, oftentimes people will look at me and say he's a racist, you know, but a white guy could say the exact same thing and they'll consider him to be a rebel. Case in point, I was having a conversation with a friend today and she said, you sound like Donald Trump, minus the racism. Minus the immigration, trying to send people, split up families. And she said, you sound like Donald Trump, meaning that, you know, because of my brashness, the, the way I talk about uh, getting back at enemies and protecting myself and looking out for my family and, 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 and just speaking my mind mainly is what she was talking about, how I speak my mind. And she thought that maybe that I liked him because he speaks his mind, right? So here's the difference. <clears throat> Most white people love a white man who speaks his mind, who is assertive, who has a bruteness about himself. They love it, right? 
one of the reasons they love it is because deep down inside, in their mind, if shit ever hits the fan, that's going to be the type of white guy in their mind who's going to save them. Conversely, when they hear me say the exact same things as a black man, in their minds, they think, whoo, I'm going to have a problem with him. He's going to be a problem. He's not going to just roll over. <laughs> There's a number of white artists out there who call the government out all the time, who talk about the dirty deeds. You got a lot of white commentators out there, TV and radio hosts, the Alex Joneses, the Rush Limbaugh's, the Glenn Becks, even the Tammy Lawrence, or whatever, however you say her name. But many of those people, they say whatever they want to say about the government. Nobody ever calls them racist. They can say the exact same things. But see, whatever they say is usually going to be tempered with some type of indictment against black people. So why is it that they're never called racist when all they do is report things that are counterproductive to the black community, but they're never called racist by the people who call me racist. Now, this is not a plea to the people who call me racist. Uh, for the ones who want to get an understanding, you're welcome to take this information and use it to your benefit. But the rest of y'all, I don't give a damn about you because there's nothing I can do to change you. And you don't want to know the truth because you have an agenda. And your agenda is to see black people struggle, black people at the bottom, black people eliminated. That's your agenda. And I understand it. And I'm not going to try to change you. But for the ones who do, you're welcome to this information and be able to use this information however you feel to move forward in life. That's what I try to do. Get an understanding and help people move forward in life. The music that I made, I said to myself before I got in the game, because I benefited from Stevie Wonder's music. His music, when they say soothe the wildest beast, music soothes the wildest beast, I was a beast growing up. And it soothed me. And I said, if I ever got a chance, that I would speak for the voiceless. That I would speak about issues that others were afraid to talk about. That I would go up against Goliath that I would champion the causes of the underserved, the underprivileged, the unemployed. I said that I was going to put myself out there and I think I've held true to my word. So I'm not going to start changing now. So get that out of your head. There's nothing you can do to change that. And if you come for me, you better not miss. Because my clap back is very, very effective. And it's not just me. Now, I'm going to tell you like I said in the Ghetto Boy song, and I'll say it like I said in a, one of my songs early on. I said, Willie D is not a bigot and he won't be. I just educate minds through reality. This ain't no motherfucking back to Africa. Try to pull that shit, we'll have a massacre. I said that in 1989, the very first song that I wrote for the Ghetto Boys called Do It Like a Geo. Once 
I was in a club at an after party and I walked into the VIP and we were just hanging out. And after about 15 minutes or so, I noticed these three white guys standing at a bar stool table. And they were looking at us and they were looking in the direction of me and the group. We were all just relaxing, hanging out, having some drinks and stuff, talking to fans. And I saw they were the only white people in the room. But they were in there and they were, you know, having a drink and they seemed a little, you know, detached, but like they wanted to come in. So I walked over to them and I said, what's up, man? And one of the dudes said, you know, after we started talking a little bit, I must have spoke to these, those dudes maybe about 10 minutes or so. But after about maybe three or four minutes, one of the dudes said, wow, man, you know, um, I thought you were a racist. <laughs> uh, even though I've never, ever, ever said that, he said, I thought you were a racist because in some white people's mind, if you talk about the government, like I said, who is controlled by mostly white people, you talk about policemen and police brutality, who is oftentimes, uh, when black people oftentimes get abused by police, is oftentimes white people, then people just send, tend to put those two together and say, well, you're talking about that kind of stuff, then you must hate white people. And we can get into the definition of racist another time, but they'll say, you, you must hate white people. And I say, well, why would you come to my show if you hated what y'all went to the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why would y'all come to the show? Why would y'all support the record if you think I'm racist? Oh, man, I, he didn't have an answer. He was like, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. And I say, nah, man, I say, it's cool, man. I love who love me and I hate who hate me. And I say, you all right with me? I'm all right with you, you all right with me. And that's how I rock. So I'll leave you with what I said on another Ghetto Boys song at the end of a song called Eye for an Eye. In 1998, we released it on our Good, the Bad, and Ugly album. And this song was inspired by the hanging of, of James, um, what's his name? Um, I can't, I'm tripping, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, James Bird. The song was inspired by James Bird. And who James Bird was a black man who was hung, was dragged on the back of a truck by three white men, white supremacists. And at that time, a lot of white people were blaming black people for not having jobs, even though white Black people don't control corporate America. Corporate America is 70% white, male, Anglo-Saxon. I spoke on that. So they're mad at black folks. See, so you have these the real race baiters train white folks to and brainwash them to believe that everybody is the problem except white folks. So the white folks who really control it and pulling all of the strings, they're pulling all of, all of the strings they're the ones who are fucking it up for everybody. They're the blame, real blame for all of the problems, but that's too much like right to blame them. So they use the media propaganda, the media, the propaganda machine to pit Americans against Americans, black against white, black against Latinos, whites against everybody. You know, that's how they do. That's their game. So, at the end of the day, if you fall for that and you really feel that way, then this message is for you. <laughs> I'm not against all white people, but I am against all white people who is against me. Fuck all you motherfuckers. No more talk. What the haters talking about? Yeah.